traveling through another dimension. A dimension not only inhabited by freaks and geeks, but also a dwarf named Carlos. A journey to the gumdrop house on Lollipop Lane, whose boundaries depend on your own mental health. That's a signpost up ahead. Pay me what you owe me, or kiss your legs goodbye. Life always has a little bit of everything for every one of us. Some nice surprises, tragic losses, new allies, betrayals. We all wish we could go back and change some of the mistakes we've made in our lives. But what happens when the man who's been given that opportunity is a sociopathic kleptomaniac, good for nothing moron. Dude, honestly, he never comes out of his room. I haven't seen him for like six months. I don't even remember what his face looks like. Huh, he doesn't even come out to go to the bathroom? No, I'd imagine that's what all the buckets are for. Ah, I bet he's dead. Nah, he uses growls to communicate. Rouse? Randall, you're not talking about our wedding present, are you? Relax, honey. We're talking about his roommate. Yeah. Plus, it looks like my present won't be able to growl anyway. Science is still pretty far from being able to create a rapping pig. I'll have to think of something else, Matt. Don't worry, dude. It's the thought that counts. Guys, I don't want any scenes at my wedding. Is that asking too much? Scenes? What do you mean by scenes? You know exactly what I mean. We've been friends for a long time now, and I know what your idea of an unforgettable experience is. Are you talking about that time we tried to summon Freddie Mercury's drunk ghost? <laughs> that was quite unforgettable. It was, and I'd be lying if I said it wasn't funny, but I'm telling you, I don't want any kind of weird stuff at my wedding. It's going to be the most important day of my life, and I don't want you guys to ruin it. Well, it's your call, but everybody knows Matt can be really romantic when he wants to. Everybody? How come I don't, then? Oh, come on, Sally. I tell you I love you almost every day. I'm super romantic. Yeah, sure. Do you mean when you belch it or when you say it in binary code? No, he means when he belches it in binary code. Matt always gives it his all. You can tell by the way he almost gags when he's doing it. Oh, by the way... Where are you going on your honeymoon? Well, I think Italy would be really romantic. The Big Ben, the Eiffel Tower, the Pantheon. I just love to go there. Oh, Sally, I told you all that stuff is in Germany. Libya is still my top choice. I'm dying to see the pyramids. What are we drinking again? Uh, some kind of beer, I think. Yeah, something like that. I miss the grog era. Those were the days. You bet. So, are you guys gonna live in Matt's place? Yep. Well, that was the plan, but I'm already looking for a new place. What? You want to move out? Come on, my mother just got us the Stovomatic 9000. I don't get it. I'm going to the restroom. Can you get us two more beers when you're done, honey? More booze? That way you'll look even hotter. Just promise me you won't puke this time. Hey, come on. You can't promise that. Sally, if we're getting married, you have to trust me. Besides, I don't like puking anymore. I feel scammed because, you know, I pay for the stuff that comes out of me. Okay, it's just that, you know... I thought we'd be doing something more romantic to celebrate our engagement. Uh, you know what would be really romantic? Let me guess. Another round? Sally, how could you know me so well? Dude, check this out. It's the engagement ring I got for Sally. What do you think? Sure looks expensive. Well, it's your money. That's just the best part. It 
cost me a Dorito. That is impossible, Matt. If you stole it, you can tell me. Sometimes I take stuff that's not mine, too. I know. Everybody knows. But I didn't steal it, dude. I got it from a bum that lives around my neighborhood. Then I think he likes you. It was really weird. The guy was all out of his mind. He was going on and on about how this ring ruined his life, that it was cursed, that it would destroy the world. <laughs> Maybe that was a metaphor. Dude, you just gave him some Doritos and he gave you a ring? Yeah, I think he likes you. Come on, Randall. The point is that I took it to a guy who told me that it's 780.563 karat gold, and somehow it's sapphire, ruby, diamond, and emerald plated. It also cuts glass, jumpstarts cars. Really? May I hold it? Dude, you're my best friend. That's why you're here. But I'll never let this ring near those kleptomaniac paws of yours. You'll never forgive me for the robo-calculator incident, right? We were just kids. No, I don't want anyone touching this ring. Whatever. I'm sure she'll love it. Looks nice. Nice? Nice? This ring is better than nice. It's the most fantastic, wondrous ring in the world. The more I look at it, the more I want to keep it for myself. What are you going to keep for yourself? The, uh, uh, puke, sweetie. No throwing up today. Oh. Well, here we go, guys. Last round. Garbage everywhere, as far as the eye can see. And it's not a problem that it is literally starting to stink. I'm afraid something will attack me if I go near his door. I really think he's dead. No, dude. I told you. He uses growls to communicate. Guys. We're supposed to be celebrating our engagement. Why are we talking about Randall's roommate again? Shh, don't worry about it, honey. That freak is dead. W where are you getting married? I really love St. Gilbert's Catholic Church, but Matt heard there's a three-headed monkey buried in the catacombs. Now it gives me the creeps. Really? I can't think about anything else. <laughs> you remind me of a couple of alcoholic hamsters I had when we were in school. They had a very long life, remember, Matt? I just hope we don't end up like those poor rodents. Dude, don't make me feel bad about that. <laughs> I don't even know how they got in the oven. I guess they were dazed and confused from all the stress and alcohol. May, May they, they rest, rest in peace. <laughs> I... I think I drank enough for today. What? Honey, you should stop, too. Me? Why? Matt, I don't like it when each of your eyes is looking off in a different direction at the same time. Really? I love that. <laughs> Seriously, Matt, that's enough for today. <laughs> I'm okay. He's okay. Oh, great. Randall, can you go check on him? I don't want him ruining another pair of my shoes. Sure. The stale, pukey air in here is starting to give me a headache. I could use some fresh, pukey air. <laughs> I just hope he slows down on the alcohol after the wedding. Oh, I'm sure after a month or two of marriage bliss, he'll move on to something stronger. I don't know, heroin, meth. <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> classic Matt. Hey, Matt! Should I grab Father Roy to perform an exorcism? You seem to have a little projectile vomiting going on. <laughs> well, 
Well, at least you don't throw up lying on your back anymore. Well, I'm a grown-up now. I can't remember what we used to call that one. Can you believe it? Wait, I think I got it. Bacon golem. You're not even close. Ah, dude, damn it. What was it? Vesuvius, Matt. Vesuvius Matt stops people in their tracks. That's it. Dude, you know what I think about you drinking that much. I know, dude, that a party's not a party till Matt Griffin starts puking it up. Exactly. But I'm kind of worried about you, you know? You don't even chew your food anymore. I think I just saw a whole nugget. You know, I saw this documentary about pigeons the other day and the way they're ahead of us. They just gulp everything down and let their stomachs do the rest. Well, they also hang out on telephone wires and shit on people's heads. You gonna do that too? <laughs> Look, Matt, I love to spend my entire paycheck on booze just like the next guy. But you might want to show a little self-control, huh? I know, dude. Life's taught me a valuable lesson today. Really? What's that? You should always check for homeless people behind the dumpster before you start puking. Um, how pissed is Sally? Come on, she just cares about you. Me, on the other hand, all I do is watch you laugh in the face of death every day. And believe me, death is the one who really must be pissed at you. Okay, I think I'm done here. Wanna hug it out? Matt, I don't wanna hug you when you're not covered in vomit. Why would I wanna hug you when you are? Yeah, I know how you roll. One, no hugs. Two, no sharing. Three, no talking to strangers. And you forgot the most important one. No altering the space-time continuum. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, the Vesuvius Matt is up and about again. Follow me, Randall, and don't lose me, because this night's going to be legendary. Um, Matt, you dropped... I think it's arrived! Hurry up! Hey, honey! I'm feeling much better now. Excellent! Now you can explain to me what the hell this woman is doing here with that animal at my wedding shower! Yeah, um... Now listen, sweetie, um... Matt, please, not now. Ladies and gentlemen, I am honored to announce that the donkey has arrived. Let the magic commence. Oh boy, what a night. Alcohol, puking, blood, and there was some praying too. Yeah. Well, I better get moving. I think I'm supposed to be working today. Hmm, hot news. Mortimer, I'm off to work. Oh, man. Is that my hangover, or is death knocking at my door again? Whoever you are, I just want you to know I have my father's gun and a scorching case Randall, of herpes. Hey, cut the shit and open the door! Mr. Marconi? Well, it sure may publish his clearing house. Open this door! Oh, whew. I'm so glad it's you. But please, don't ever do that again. God damn it, Hicks. Do what? Scare me like that. I nearly turned my Fruit of the Looms into a fudge factory. Damn, Cannelloni. 
Did you just call me Cannelloni? Oh, come on, listen. I've had a terrible night. I swear somebody was whispering in my ear over and over that I'm cursed. And I'm fairly certain I pissed in my closet again. Oh, do you know what day it is? No, no. Are you gonna try and get that ferret out of the plumbing? Because I don't know if I can stomach staring at your hairy ass crack all day. Very funny. Your rent takes. As usual, you're late. I don't see my money. Neither do I, Mr. Marconi. But come on, it's only a couple of days late. No big deal. You owe me three months. Oh. Well, there must have been some kind of problem with the paperwork. Damn bureaucracy. Let me talk to my financial advisor. I'll get back to you as soon as I can. Ah, Hicks, you need a financial advisor like I need ballerina shoes. That's lame. Well, what about the time I tried to pay you in gold coins? Those were bottle caps painted gold. Took me three weeks to get the paint off my hands. Mr. Marconi, I've been meaning to talk to you, but I don't think you're gonna like what I'm about to say. I'm sure I won't. I have the feeling we're growing apart. What are you talking about? I've met someone else. I mean, don't get me wrong, I still love you and all, but I just don't think this is gonna work out. What the hell? Please, don't say anything. It's better to end now before desire takes over. Just hold me for one last time. God damn it, just give me my damn money. I'm sick of you. Mr. Marconi, I have a problem. You were born with a problem. No, I wasn't. The thing is, my job's been getting me down lately. I'm being exploited, you know? There are always hundreds of orders that have to be delivered on their due date and in perfect condition. And do you know what the worst part is? I don't care. The customers, they're only worried about themselves. They never thank me or say, have a nice day. They treat me like dirt, you know? Like I have no feelings. They always say things like, the package is smashed. The package shouldn't drip. This is not the address you're looking for. Is it too much to ask that they just sign for their damn delivery and keep their smashed packages? Randall. Yes, Mr. Marconi? You work for the town's worst courier service, and you spend more time trying to think of ways to get out of work than you do actually working. Whoa, 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 Mr. Marconi, that's not entirely true. It is entirely true. Randall, you're like a son to me. You know what that means, don't you? That you're willing to support me until I find my way in the world? Oh my god! Are you gonna buy me my first car? Thanks, Daddy! Jesus H. Christ. Your parents must feel like schmucks for feeding you and cleaning your cage so long. Thank you, Mr. Marconi. You're like the father I always wanted. This year I'll make you a special card for Father's Day, with macaroni and glitter. Oh, you wear me out, Hicks. You could learn something from that roommate of yours, Mortimer. Now there's a real hard worker. What are you talking about? The guy hasn't come out of his room for months. Mortimer is the perfect tenant. He keeps it down and never gives me any trouble. All you do is make my life miserable. Mr. Marconi, we already had this conversation, and I promised you, no more megaphone after 10 o'clock. And as far as I know, Mortimer doesn't even speak our language. Leave him alone. You should try and be more responsible, Hicks. Eh, do something with your life, for God's sake. Yeah, yeah, in a minute. By the way, you said you'd give me back my megaphone. I want my money now. Now that you mention Mortimer, he's the one that should have paid. Oh. Oh, I just had what alcoholics refer to as a moment of clarity. I gave my half to Mortimer last week. That's enough, Hicks. Your roommate is a busy man, so leave him out of your lives. Go back in there and fix this. I'm not moving from here until you pay up. You know, Mr. Marconi, there's this rumor spreading that you've got so much money that you don't know what to do with it all. What? Do I look like a rich man to you, Hicks? Well, now that you mention it, you kind of look like you should be living in a garbage can. Very funny, Hicks. You know what? One call and I can have you turned into fish food. Nah, 
I'm not really fond of marine fauna. But if there's one thing that's clear, it's you're a wealthy man. So you won't even notice if I don't pay you this month either. Hicks. All right, Mr. Marconi. I'll see what I can do. Comrade Mortimer, we have a code red. Old Marconi wants us to pay everything we owe him today. <laughs> Mortimer, cut it out and give me the money or you're gonna wake up tomorrow with my head in your bed. And you'll be next. Cause when I tell him you've been writing Mrs. Marconi love letters, you're going down too, buddy. <laughs> I didn't get a single word of that. I think we made it clear with that one growl means no, two growls means yes. You just made me want to break down the door and stomp on your head. Wait a second. Three growls now? Dude, we said two means yes, one means no. But three? What's that all about? Mortimer, I'll never understand this language of yours. Can we please go back to Klingon? Escape, huh? Yeah, good idea. I like that metallic noise they make. Makes me feel safe. <laughs> what the hell was that? Was that the fire escape? Maybe we should think this through. Although, I bet it's not as frightening as old Marconi's hairy vein. <laughs> Maybe it is. Judging by that noise, I'd say there's some scary-ass creature in that alley. Whoa, whoa, seriously. I'm relatively too young to die. Whew. Okay, I'm gonna die here. But at least I will look death in the eye and say, I'm not afraid of you. this over a stupid filthy cat well that's embarrassing luckily no one saw me except for the cat and mrs. Grozer of course I can't reach it I need to release the ladder but I can't Look at that, and I still have some wire left. Ah! Phew, perfect. I got rid of that stinking cat, and now the coast is clear. Things are looking up. You're cursed. Huh? You're cursed. Um, what now? Cursed. Cursed? So that wasn't my imagination after all. You're cursed! Aw, oh, man. Was that you in my ear all night? I had a hell of a night because of you. Worst night since I ate that three-year-old jar of mayonnaise. Wait till I get down there! You're cursed! That does it. No one curses Randall. Bye-bye, Mrs. Grozer. Say hi to Mr. Grozer. What are the odds? Whew, that was close. I feel like I'm gonna puke my heart out. Whew. 
this must be what freedom tastes like. You're cursed! Easy, easy. I haven't forgotten about you. Let me just check and make sure everything is where it should be, then I'll decide whether to face you or get the hell out of here. Just after I throw a rock at your face or something. So, you're a bum, huh? And who are you? What? You don't even know I'm the victim of your nighttime screaming? I think you're mistaken. The cat went that way. You're the one I'm looking for, bum. Your days of cursing people are over. Wrong again! I am no bum. Of course you are. And with an obvious drinking problem, I'd say. Boy, you couldn't be more wrong. I'm a businessman, and I only drink energy drinks. Oh, well excuse me, Gordon Gecko. I didn't know this was your office. Be careful when you get out onto the street. You don't want that nice suit getting dirty. Aw, oh, low blow, kid. Running a business is no walk in the park, you know. If you want to be someone in life, you gotta start at the bottom. Yeah, well you got the edge there, because this is rock bottom. Besides, everybody knows drunk people always tell the truth. So if you say I'm a drunk bum that says he's not a bum, but really he is, wouldn't that be paradoxical, Mr. Smiley Pants? Well, let's see. You dress like a bum, you smell like a bum, and nothing you say makes any sense. Okay, maybe I'm a business bum. Are you interested in a retching cat? Oh boy, poor old man. The alcohol's pickled your brain. Listen, your problem is that you haven't been with a girl in a long time, if ever. Am I right? Listen, bum, I've got two words for you. Shut the fuck up. They say a little knowledge is a dangerous thing, but what of the man who possesses too much knowledge? Well, he won't end up living in an alley, that's for sure. So where did you learn that saying anyway? On a TV show or something? No. You mean yes? No. Oh, really? Because I think I heard that one on the scary door last week. I said no. Us bums don't watch sci-fi shows. Aha! <laughs> you just gave yourself away, old man. No. I, I don't think so. Okay, whatever. Take care, old man, and stay out of trouble. You don't want to end up getting grounded. We'll meet again. Can't wait. You're cursed! Well, you can't deny it now. You just said it. I heard you. Said what? Why are you torturing me like this? I didn't do anything. Not yet, but you will. Oh, God. I know you're kind. I have my own problems, too, you know. My boss and my landlord are boneheads, and they're both pissed at me. And if I don't deal with them soon, I might end up living down here with you. If knowledge is power and power corrupts, how will humankind ever survive? Oh my god, those lame sayings again, really? Aren't you supposed to pay a copyright on them or something? Not me. Okay, great. So in summary, you're a bum and I'm cursed. Yes. Aha! Didn't you say you knew nothing about it? That was just an opinion. I think you're cursed, and I can help you. You can help me? <laughs> That's a laugh. I went to school for seven years. I'm no dummy. Clearly. Welp, I thought I could be of help. Look, I can take care of myself, like Gordon Freeman. I don't know that Freeman guy. But here, take my card, boy. Give me a call if you change your mind. This? This is a rusty old razor blade, and there's no number on it. I don't think I'm gonna find anything useful in there. <laughs>